What's going on guys? Welcome back to the video here in the World of Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of the New York Yankees Legends Fantasy Draft Series. Yeah, I bet you thought I forgot about this series. You bet you thought that I forgot that we were doing this series. I was going to let it go. No, 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 no. Not today. I'm not forgetting about this. I'm enjoying this series because I, uh, I'm having a good time. The last time we uploaded this was the day that I got back from vacation a week ago. So it's been a, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. A lot of Madden coverage. A lot of Madden 22 content has been posted on the channel. There was a White Sox video uh, squeezed in there. But a lot of Madden 22 coverage. And that's going to stay like that for the foreseeable future. But there will be little sprinkles. Little sprinkles of MLB content here and there when I, uh, when I record it. And then when NBA 2K comes out. There may be little sprinkles of NBA content coming out too, but mainly Madden 22 content. But we're not talking about Madden 22 or NBA 2K. We are talking about MLB The Show and the New York Yankees, your two-time defending World Series champions. That's right, boy. Back to back. And we're looking to go for a third straight, a three-peat, something that's never been done in the history of MLB. I don't think. Don't fact check me on that. But something that is, if it has been done, something that has not been done for hundreds of years. So, can we do it? I don't know. I, I don't know. I think we can. But we are not only looking to go for a third straight World Series, we are also looking to go for the wins record. Which is the Seattle Mariners at 116, I'm pretty sure, back in 2001. They did it then. We're looking to do it now. We have 68 wins currently at the start of August. I don't know if it's possible to get the wins record. I think we might have a little bit of a chance. We got about two months plus... A week or so in in October, so there's a chance if we just absolutely dominate the rest of the season and just win a bunch of games, it it's not looking very plausible for this season to get the wins record. So that one might not be in the realm of possibility, but the World Series for the third straight year is definitely in the realm of possibility. So without further ado, let's continue on that path. We got the month of August in this episode. Make sure to smash that like button, notification bell, and subscription button as well. Join the Juice Club. Let's get to it. So here we are in the month of August. It is August 1st, 2024. We got a game against the Twins to start the month. Like I mentioned in the intro, we are 68 and 33. We have 68 wins on the year. Nine games ahead of the Rays, who are in second. They also top the wild card along with the Orioles. I think the Orioles are also top the wild card. So it's it's both of the AL East teams in the wild card. Um, off camera, I did re-sign Glaber Torres and Bob Feller to contract extensions because those are the two guys that did not have arbitration. They were just straight up free agents after this year. So Johan Santana and Shane Bieber do have arbitration. So I feel like the smart option is to go through arbitration with these guys. It's going to cost a lot. But I feel like in the long run, it will save us a little bit of money because it won't cost us as much down the road. Who knows? Maybe I'm making a stupid decision. I don't know. But we can pay it. We're the New York Yankees. We'll be we'll be fine. So that's where I'm at on contract extensions. As for the lineups, everybody's looking really solid. It was a W of a pickup with Mickey Mantle. Derek Jeter's even playing really well. Griffey at DH has had a bounce back year. As good as he did in 2022, he had a down year last year, but now being DH, he's killing it. 302 with 30 home runs, 88 RBIs. He's slugging 629, which is the best since the very first year we started. And he's just, he's hitting amazing. He's doing really well. I'm really proud of Griffey for having a bounce back year. Lou Gehrig, we got at the deadline, who was looking really good. He's got 30 home runs, 86 RBIs. We got 26 home runs from Barry Bonds. We've got 16 from Sammy Sosa, who could bounce up. He could, I could use a little bit of a bounce back from Sammy Sosa, but he's doing okay. 25 from Glaber Torres, who we also got at the deadline. A-Rod's got 32, hitting 310. And then Joe Maurer's got 16, hitting 275. So everybody in this lineup is absolutely killing it. Our, our uh, bench is doing really well, too. We got guys hitting... Great averages on the bench, uh, especially 
Ricky Henderson, who's hitting 444 and nine at bats. That's pretty good. We may need to sub him in. I don't know. Maybe no, we can't take out Mickey Mantle. That's for sure. And we can't take out. Uh, I guess we could take out Barry Bonds if we need to. But I like having Ricky Henderson on the bench for that speed, like in a pinch running situation, along with like Ichiro. We got a lot of guys that could pinch run for us. Well, only two, I guess, that could pinch run for us. So I mean, Willie Mays isn't super slow, but really two guys that could pinch run for us. And then the pitcher rotation, 12 and four with a 3.6 ERA is Randy Johnson. Greg Maddox is pitching 10 and four with a 3.47. Johan Santana, who we traded for, is a 12 and three with a 4.58. 10 and four for John Smoltz, and six and four for Zach Bynkey. And Shohei Otani's got a 3.1 and a 6.24. So. Everybody in this bullpen is pitching out of this world, except for Roberto Asuna. He's uh, having a down year. <laughs> His ERA has skyrocketed the past couple of games. I don't know what he's doing. What's his contract looking like? We got it for two more years after this year. So Asuna may need to get a little bit of work in. Maybe we knock him down to AAA next season to start the year because he needs to, I don't know. He just, he's not pitching as good as he has been in the past couple of years. And he just needs to he needs to get reacclimated, I guess. But that's where we stand at the start of August. Uh, if we want to check the awards really quickly, I'm not sure if we have any award winners. We've got most valuable player Bryce Harper, and he probably deserves it because he's hitting 377 on the year so far. We've got Cy Young, Roger Clemens, Randy Johnson's trying to fight for a back-to-back, -back, but I don't know if he's going to get there because Roger Clemens and Walter Johnson both have. Uh, really low ERAs and that's what really kills you in the Cy Young. You got to have a low ERA if you want to win Cy Young. It's you could also have you could have the best record in the league. You'd have a Randy Johnson could be like 15 and 1, but if he had a 3.6 ERA, he's probably not winning Cy Young. So that sucks for him. I don't think we have any other major awards. We got a couple gold glove possibilities, silver slugger possibilities, but you really want to win Cy Young and and MVP and we're not going to probably win either. So that's all right. Now, as far as the game that we are going to be playing in today's episode, we're going to play a home game because I feel like we haven't played a lot of home games. Maybe we haven't. I'm just forgetting. But I feel like we need to play a home game. And the only home games we have this month is a series against the Orioles, Twins, Mets, Mariners, and then Orioles again. So it's really probably either the Mets or the Mariners because... You know I love doing the Subway series with the Mets. And then the Mariners, we haven't really seen a lot of the Mariners this uh, this series, so we could do them. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of the Twins either, but I don't know. Maybe I don't, let's just simulate because we know we're not going to play any of these games. So let's simulate up to here. We need to get as many wins as possible. Uh, we, have an, ooh, we have a message, an important message. What's the important message? Uh, I thought you should know that Ramiel Tapia... That's my important message? I don't know what my important message was. My important message was Romeo Tapia being waived. I don't care about that. Everybody's looking good. We have 73 wins now in the year. We are going to keep simulating. We've only lost two games this month. Uh, Isaiah Kiner Falef uh, Falefa? Is that how you say his name? Falefa? He fractured his wrist. He's out for two to three months, so that's an L. Josh Jung, keep him active. So we lost three games. We have not won a series. Uh, we have not swept the series this entire month, but we have only lost three games. So that is good, I guess. I don't need to sign draft picks. I need to go to this and get rid of that. All right, so we're 10 games up on the Rays. We have a series against the Rays, and then we have a series against the Rays here in uh, September as well, and then in October. So we have three more series against the Rays. Those are going to be some big games. The Red Sox are absolutely just got off. I don't know what happened to them. Is Okay, Randy's ERA is going down slightly. It needs to go down a little bit more if he, has a, if he wants to have a chance at winning this Cy Young. Yeah, he... He's going to struggle, especially with these guys having such low ERAs. Plus, Walter Johnson's killing it with the with the wins. So, I don't think it's going to be back-to-back -back for, for Randy Johnson. But do we want to play the Twins? That's the question. Do we want to play the Mets or the Mariners? Who's some of the pitching matches? We got Joey, Joey Murray, excuse me, Joey Murray, uh, Johan Duran, and Cody Bolton. 
I don't know who any of those guys are. Let's take a quick gander at the Twins roster, see who they're working with. Maybe we decide who we want to play, if we want to play them. They've got Gary Sheffield, Raphael Devers. Uh, no, nah, it's not It's not worth it. We simulate the Twins. We simulate the Twins. It's not worth it. And we take three straight dubs. Exactly how I thought it would happen. So there's our first series sweep of the month. Now we got the Rays and the Orioles. We can sit past those guys because we know we're not going to play them. And we lost one game to the Rays and one game to the Orioles again. We won both series, but we did lose some more games. We have 83 wins, boys. 83 wins. The wins record is not out of the realm of possibility. It is not out of the realm of possibility. Because we got a whole month here, boys. We got a whole month. We could take some big dubs here. Now, do we want to play the Mets? Or the Mariners. We've got Al Leiter, JC Clooney, and Marco Gonzalez. Or Devin Smeltzer, Jack Leiter. And then we don't know the, the last game of the Mariners series. I think we've played the Subway series before. So maybe we give that a little bit of a break. We play, let's play the Mariners. And we lost Keelian, uh, or Kellen Deglin with a broken hand. We won that series, but we only took two out of three. So, Ian McKinney is the other game. Randy Johnson versus Jack Leiter. That sounds like an interesting matchup. 85 wins on the year. I think it could be this game. Let's simulate this first game. It's a W against the Mariners. Zach Greinke gets another win. And now it's time to play the Mariners. If we take a quick look at... Uh, I hate all these notifications. If we take a quick look at how everybody's doing, his ERA went back up. So it's not looking like Randy Johnson's going to win the Cy Young back-to-back -back years, which is hard to do, to be fair. But, I mean, it's Randy Johnson. If anybody can do it, it's him. But his ERA is just too high to, to come back. I mean, we're going to play this game, so I'm going to try and, and lower it as much as I can. But even if I throw a complete game or a, a no hitter or a perfect game or anything like that it's probably not going to lower that much anyway so it's probably out of the realm of possibility our lowest era is a three six. Oh, actually yeah okay it's a three six by greg maddox so all of our eras are always really high i don't know why they are always so high but they are asunia still got a 714 era mariano rivera doesn't have very many uh he has a lot of losses, three losses, but he has 32 saves. I mean, Mariano's older at this point. He's 38. What can you really expect from him? How long is he going to be our closer? I don't know. As long as he wants to be our closer, I'll give him the shot. As long as he doesn't drop to like a 60 or something, then uh, he'll be our closer. So mm -hmm. we're going to jump into this game against the Seattle Mariners. Make sure to smash that like button and notification bell and the subscription button as well. Join the Juice Club. I'll see you guys in the game. Closing in on first pitch this evening from Yankee Stadium here in the Bronx. Tonight, a compelling matchup of division contenders between the Seattle Mariners and the New York Yankees. We've got baseball on the show, and it's coming up next. Randy Johnson is ready to go as he'll be on the mound for the Yanks. What's your take on him, Dan? Hey, Matty V, this ought to be a lot of fun. This guy won the Cy Young Award last year in the AL, so he knows how to pitch. And one of the things he does effectively, he attacks the strike zone. And if he does that, he should be fun to watch in this one. So now into the box is Louis Aparicio. And we are set for baseball. Here we go, boys. Baseball in the Bronx is underway with a strike by Randy Johnson. 100 miles per hour by the big unit. 86 wins on the year. I did give Derek Jeter the day off. He was a little bit tired, so we got A-Rod playing shortstop, and David Wright is filling in at third base. So I feel like every time we jump into a game, Jeter is always tired. I don't know why that is, but it just happens that way. So 
but we get to see David Wright, somebody that we don't necessarily always get to see. So it, it's a good thing that we get to we get to see some new faces, and we get to have A Rod play a different position, something that he played in uh, Washington in year number one. If you guys remember, he was a shortstop, and then when I traded for him or brought him in, whatever I did, I think I traded for him. When I traded for him, I switched him to third base so that he could play alongside Derek Jeter. Uh, and it seems to have worked out. I mean, he's not hitting the same that he was that year, year number one. I think he had like 50 plus home runs that year. But he's still a very solid player for us. Don't get me wrong. Speaking of very solid players for us, Randy Johnson, we know the mission. We've got to try and lower his ERA as quickly as possible and the most efficiently as possible, which means getting out of innings as quickly and as... Uh, consistently as possible like that exactly how we needed to do it three up three down for Randy in the first inning now we got Mickey Mantle 43 home runs leads the American League in home runs so we know nobody has more than good old Mickey this is also first pitch swinging is that 44 it's not 44 it was close I thought I did it first pitch that would have been crazy I have yet to hit a home run with Mickey Mantle Glaber Torres moved up to second in the lineup to take him, uh, place of Jeter. Wrights, I think David Wright's hitting eighth or something. Ooh, that was a good pitch. But we do, what I was going to say before I hit that ball with Mickey Mantle was we do get to see Lou Gehrig for the first time in the series. I don't think I showed, I don't think he was in the last episode, or at least if he was, he wasn't a Yankee. Yeah, because, yeah, because uh, we got him at the deadline and... and the deadline was July 31st, so this is the first time we get to see Lou Gehrig as a New York Yankee in the series. Glaber Torres grounds that to third base, and it's going to be out for the second out. That's okay, though, because we got the big man himself. Here comes Junior, hitting 301 in the year, over 30 home runs. Ken Griffey Jr. trying to send one. I think I have a streak going with, with Ken Griffey Jr. I think I have a, a streak of hitting a home run, at least one home run with Ken Griffey Jr. in the past, like, three games or something. I don't know. I don't want to try and – I don't want to jinx that in case that's not true or, or something. But I don't know. I feel like that's a thing. Maybe it's – I'm just imagining it or maybe I'm manifesting it so that it could happen. woo I thought for a second that was gone. That is for sure. That looked pretty good off the bat, but it was foul. Ooh, I don't know if I should sweep. Is that going to be a strike? That was a very risky take. That was a very risky take because that could easily have been called strike three. And then I would have been sit down looking. That's going to be inside the shift. When do you see that? <laughs> when do you see a ball hit so perfectly that it's inside the shift like that? Boom, he had to go down. He had to golf for that one. And here he is, Lou Gehrig, for the first time as a New York Yankee, at least on camera. For the first time on video as a, as a New York Yankee. Let's see how he does. Let's see if he can impress us here. Ooh. If that would have went Oppo Taco, that would have been crazy. Even like a double would have been good because Griffey's got enough speed to... Ooh, that was a good pitch. Griffey's got the speed to get to third, maybe even get home if it's deep enough. I don't know, maybe getting home would be a little bit too much. Maybe we're testing it too much. That's going to be in the air, but it's going to be out... Is that Monty Irvin? I don't know who that is in the center field. It's not Monty Irvin. Now we got Reggie Jackson, Mr. October. I am looking to target Ricky Jackson, or Ricky, yeah, Reggie Jackson, excuse me, not Ricky Jackson. Uh, Reggie Jackson. Because I would like to have him on the team. Now, I don't know if there's two versions of Ricky, of Reggie. Why do I keep saying Ricky? I don't know if there's two versions of Reggie. Or if this is the only one. If this is the only one, then I'll, I'll get him at some point. But if there's a younger version and then an older version, I'll probably go for the younger version. As we strike out Reggie. Who's up next? They got Alex Bregman. Okay. Alex Bregman, one of the few actual 
real players in the in the game is on this team. You don't see a lot of those lineups that have multiple guys that are actually real current MLB players. I shouldn't say real players because all these guys are real players, but actual current MLB players. You, you get lineups that have like one, maybe two. Sometimes you get a lineup that has like three, four because they kind of fell in the in that draft and they drafted those guys or they uh, they signed a couple of current players. But Randy Johnson is having a great day. This is the kind of day that we need. This is the kind of day that we need to uh, to lower that ERA. Strikeouts, ground balls, no hits, no home runs, nothing like that. We can't have anything like that if we want to try and lower this ERA. So let's throw a slider down low and see if he falls for it. Ooh. Ooh. I thought for sure he would go down chasing that. That was a good pitch. How did he not chase that? I would have chased that. He connects with the splitter foul. So let's throw the change up again here. See if we can get him. And we do get it. Peyton the corner. And the umpire gives it to me. That was a very generous strike call. Sammy. Oh, excuse me. Barry Bonds. Not Sammy Sosa. Sammy Sosa will be coming up later. But it's Barry Bonds. I have not hit a home run with Barry Bonds in a minute. And I thought that was going to be the one, but the PCI was not in the right location. I was a little bit on top of it. There's Sammy Sosa. Sammy Sosa is now at the plate. And if you guys remember, how could you forget? Sammy Sosa's very first at-bat as a Yankee was a no-doubt home run. That was a couple of years ago at this point. But how could you forget Sammy Sosa hitting a home run like that and I brought the PCA PCI down way too low on that oops Ooh. he tried to get me chasing with a slider outside Jack Leiter thinking he's funny thinking he's cute that's gonna fall for sure okay I didn't know if it was gonna fall behind him or what I didn't know if I was gonna get a double you never know. And now we got A-Rod, who is pretty decent both ways, home and away. His average is a little lower on the road, but at home he's absolutely just killing it. Oh, excuse me, I had it backwards. Alright, alright, so A-Rod goes down. Now we got David Wright. We've seen some games between with David Wright. He, he gets into a few games here and there, and he's going to get a base hit to right field that will knock Sammy to second. Now we should have... Now we should have Joe Maurer up. I was a little bit late on the timing on that. If that would have been more uh, accurate timing. Could have been more damage. Joe Maurer is sending that to the yard. Joe Maurer! With a three-run dinger, baby. Get the home run symbols out because Joe Mauer. I wasn't expecting that. Let's go, Joe. I was not sitting home run on that pitch. But he got enough power, got enough pop on it. Jack Leiter left it out, and Joe Maurer sends it. 98.8 miles per hour exit velo. 388 was the distance. And we get a three-run homer. All right, I will take it. I, I wasn't expecting it, but I will take it for sure. Oh, I checked that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I did not mean to swing at that. Now let's see if I can get a home run with Mickey. I got a home run already with Joe Maurer, who I don't usually hit home runs with. Can I get one with Mickey Mantle? <laughs> back to back? Are you kidding me? Number 44, and it was an absolute dynamite moonshot, baby. Off the foul pole. Let's go. Joe Maurer and then Mickey Mantle back to back guys that I have yet to hit home runs with in on camera and I do back to back with them look at that pitch 353 is the distance and that's back to back boys that is back to back 
unbelievable. Can I go three for three? Ah. Uh, I might have been able to if the PCI was a little better positioning. But, hey, man, back-to-back -back home runs and it gives me a four-run lead, I'll take it. I will take it any day of the week. That gives Randy Johnson a four-run cushion. He can relax and just pitch in a gem of a game like he usually does. So let's see what happens here in the third inning, the final on-camera inning. Oh, beautiful change. Beautiful change. Let's go with the slider. He's going to expect the splitter because that's what I've been throwing. And he's going to make contact with it to shortstop. A-Rod with a nice pass. A nice pass. I'm play too much Madden. Nice throw to Lou Gehrig. Now let's see what Jim Tome, or some would say Jim Thome. <laughs> I've heard that actually. That's legit. That's not like Cap or anything. I've heard somebody pronounce his name Jim Thome. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I did look at getting Jim Tomei. Uh, he was, he just didn't really fit my my scheme, or he didn't fit the way that I wanted to build this roster. That doesn't mean that he won't ever be a Yankee. Woo! But I mean, just at the moment, he doesn't fit the scheme. Maybe down the road, I give him a shot. But who knows? Maybe I, I don't know. Plus, he's getting a little bit older, I think. I think there's only one version of Jim Tomei, and it's the old version, so I don't know how much he's going to have have left in him. MJ Melendez. This is the first time I've ever uh, pitched against this guy. Like, not just in this series, but just ever. I've never I've never come up against this guy. Let's see if we can strike him out, though. And bye-bye. He went for it. He shouldn't have, but he went for it. And that's going to do it. I will see you guys when something good happens. Oh, that was a missile. And that's going to send Barry Bonds home. What a missile from A-Rod. <laughs> that was crazy. That's going to be 5 nothing, baby. That's going to get through, and that's going to be another RBI. David Wright gets one through. That's 6, baby. That's going to be a big run for Glaber. Sending A Rod home. Sending David Wright to third. Seven nothing. It's getting out of hand, boys. It is getting out of hand. And there's the RBI leaders. That's another RBI for Glaber. I did it again, boys. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Ken Griffey Jr., when I have Ken Griffey Jr., I am a different breed. I am built different, boys. Another home run with Ken Griffey Jr. Somebody go back and fact check. How many home runs in a row have I hit with Griffey in the past game, like in the past videos? How many videos in a row have I done it? Because I am on an absolute tear with Griffey, and I'm killing it, and I am a different breed. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you're aware. There you have it. Right underneath my camera. Perfect game through eight innings. We're going for perfection for the second time in the series, I think. Right? We did it in year one with Hinjun Ryu. Can we do it here? A-Rod with the catch. One more out, ladies and gentlemen. A-Rod with the catch of his life. There's one. That's... Probably should have been called a strike, but it's okay. There's two. And the crowd is on their feet. The crowd is on their feet. Are they witnessing history? A perfect game from Randy Johnson. Bruh. Oh, my.
We were one strike away. Not just one out, not just one inning. We were one strike away from a perfect game. And MJ Melendez, out of all the people in this lineup, MJ Melendez is the man to do it. And he didn't just get a base hit. He got a lucky base hit. He got one that squeaked up the middle of the field in between second base and shortstop. And oh, I can't believe it. We were one strike away. One strike away. I might as well let Randy finish it. I mean, he's gotten this far. He was literally one strike away from a complete, from a perfect game. So we might as well let him get the complete game. I can't believe that MJ Melendez hit that. We won, but you got to think that it's an empty victory. Yeah, we put up 10 runs. Yeah, we, we looked like we were the most dominant team in the planet. But it just feels, it feels empty because we were, you, we were the closest that you could physically be without actually getting the, the perfect game. It's hollow, it's a hollow victory in my books. It's still a victory, but it's a hollow one. <sighs> that's, that's sad, boys. It's, it's just, it's sad. I can't believe that it actually happened like that, but... It is what it is. So we end up not getting the perfect game, which blows, but we did get a complete game and a great game from everybody in the in the Yankees organization. So we are going to simulate the last couple of games of the month of August, and we won two out of the three final games. We lost one to the, the Orioles, but we still have a game against, uh, against the whatchamacallits, the Orioles. Uh, we have one notification. Oh, it's September call-ups. We got September call us. We got two roster spots, boys. Who are we going to call up? Do we want to talk about it today or do we want to wait till next episode? I'm thinking that we call up our good friend and resident Yankee player, Ryan Howard. I'm thinking that we call up Ryan Howard because I've promised him on many occasions that we would bring him up and keep him on the roster and i've failed that promise a bunch so ryan howard's definitely an option to bring up whoops didn't mean to do that ryan howard's definitely an option we could also bring up wander franco who we have brought up before and is probably getting close to being a consistent member of this roster i mean in seven games he hits nine he had nine hits two home runs and a 360 average so i mean that's not bad at all so wander franco is definitely an option trey turner is an option he hasn't played for two seasons but that's okay so trey turner is definitely a, a guy that we could possibly bring up we have to think about that uh in the outfield we could bring up jd martinez we could bring up uh jason dominguez is definitely an option Jason Hayward is an option, who I thought would be playing a little bit better down in, in AAA, but only seven home runs in 40 games. 336 average is pretty good. 620 slugging. I mean, he's he's not playing bad, but I just feel like with a guy of his stature, should be hitting a little bit better than that. Uh, and then obviously in the pitching, because you know how I like to bring up one hitter, one pitcher. We could bring up guys like... Hunter Green, who we brought up before and has played decently well. He had three games uh, in 2022. Didn't have the best ERA, but he's young. He's 14-4 in AAA this season, so, I mean, he's not doing bad by any means. We could also bring up a guy like Chris Sale or Shane Bieber or Jack Flattery or Roy Halladay. Any of these starting pitchers in the AAA system could be brought up. They're all pitching decently well. I mean, uh, Bieber's not pitching the greatest but he's not pitching bad. Jordan Hicks could get brought up. I don't know. We'll have to think about it in the next episode. We could also bring up Jose Leclerc. He could be brought up as well. So we'll have to think about it. 
and decide for the next episode because next episode september call-ups the next episode will be the whole month of september we will play a game in here i'm not sure who maybe we play the braves because we haven't played uh, an nl team in a while especially on the road so maybe we play the braves in the in the next episode and then we finish september and we finish october so then the episode after that is the playoffs i hope you guys did enjoy make sure to smash that like button if you did hit that notification button the subscription button as well join the juice club and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace